Lithium is one of the important drugs which is tested in NCLEX RN. Big mistake which I see people, they always do. But you also need to understand when the drugs cross certain level, when they go above the therapeutic level, they become dangerous and they can cause toxicity and adverse effects in the patient. And patient is saying, I don't feel like eating, I'm nauseous. Now that's a red flag for a nurse. Hello, nurses and nursing students. In this video, I will be teaching you guys about lithium drug. Lithium is one of the important drugs which is tested in NCLEX RN. So I hope after this video, you guys will not have any more questions about lithium and you will do all your questions correct in NCLEX. But make sure you guys watch the full video. So you need to understand my friends, lithium is a mood stabilizer. So this is the another big mistake which I see people, they always do. Students, they think this is an antidepressant. Lithium is not an antidepressant. Lithium is actually given to the bipolar patients. Bipolar, I hope you guys know, like patients mood shifts between depression and mania. So that's called as bipolar disorder. And primarily, lithium drug is given to stabilize that manic phase of it. So is it an antidepressant? No, it is a mood stabilizer. Now let's just get onto the presentation and learn more about it. The nurses must know about the indications and contraindications and potential adverse effects. So I will be covering all those things in this presentation. So make sure you guys stay with me. And then mostly in your NCLEX RN exam, you see the questions which are on side effects and of course the management of the lithium. So those are the important topics what you see around. So now let's just get on and talk about the action of lithium. So lithium is a mood stabilizer. Primarily it's an anti-manic medication and this is to reduce the intensity and frequency of manic episodes. And how does that work is again, you don't want to go into too much in depth, but just want to explain you guys that how lithium works is lithium works by decreasing the release of norepinephrine and increasing the levels of serotonin. I tell the students in the simple language that serotonin is a happy neurotransmitter, right? And noradrenaline, you guys know, it's kind of like fight and flight. So what we are trying to do is the mania is like, you know, patient is in a state of excitability. So we want to reduce that excitement and bring the mood up. Now, I hope you guys understand. So when we bring the norepinephrine down and we are bringing the serotonin, which is a happy hormone, your patient is going to start feeling better. So now you can see how this medication is adjusting the mood of the patient. Now let's just move on the therapeutic range. So you need to understand that lithium is known for its narrow therapeutic range. So most of the time when I teach the students, they get confused like Tarun, what's the meaning of narrow therapeutic? Therapeutic means when the medications are working, and giving us the results we want. So the range for this one is 0.6 to 1.2. But you also need to understand when the drugs cross certain level, when they go above the therapeutic level, they become dangerous and they can cause toxicity and adverse effects in the patient. So I hope now you guys know normal is 0.6 to 1.2. That's a therapeutic level of this drug in the blood. But if this level reaches 1.5, patient can have toxicity symptoms. As nurses, we have to be vigilant and you need to monitor when your patient is going into toxicity. So now, do you see that 1.2 and 1.5, it's very close. This is the meaning of narrow therapeutic index. I hope you guys understand that. This is important. This is what they test in your NCLEX RN. So you need to understand patient has some early signs and patient has some late signs. And this is the tip I give to my students for NCLEX RN. Always remember things will be simple initially and then they become complex. So moral of the story, initially patients always present with GI symptoms. Patient can have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. So if you see that the patient is on lithium drug and patient is saying, I don't feel like eating, I'm nauseous. Now that's a red flag for a nurse that patient is going into the early signs of toxicity. So now let's just say if a nurse does not pay attention to it, what can happen is patient enters into the next zone. I already told you initially we have simple GI symptoms as the patient moves on, patient can have more complex neuro symptoms, right? And you can see in this presentation, patient can have late signs, confusion, ataxia. This point is very important. Write it down in your notebooks that comes in the exam. 
and ataxia is like patient would have difficulty in walking loss of coordination and i always teach my students whenever there is loss of coordination means risk for falls so you want to also monitor your patient for risk for falls that's one of the important topics again they test now these are the signs which tells you that it's very important for a nurse to immediately notify the healthcare provider which is the doctor now let's just talk a little bit more about the nursing management of course as a nurse it's very crucial for you to monitor the lithium lab values or serum lab values because i teach students from 13 14 different countries right when i prepare them for nclex rn and every country has a different back home you know experience i am originally from india so in india nurses they do not look into the lab values right but here in canada so i also worked as registered nurse here in canada and i also taught as a nursing professor in canadian university so i want to share my experience with you guys is here registered nurses has to go through the lab value so when you see a lab value and you feel like oh my gosh the patient's level is 1.7 now do you think you want to wait or you want to call the physician what's your answer put it in a comment section yes i guess you guys are right so when you screen those lab results and you know your patient is going into toxicity we have to notify the physician right away Another important thing is education. So as nurses, we always educate our clients and you want to make sure your patient should avoid activities in the hot weather. And you guys must be thinking, why is so? So I am going to teach you the next D's. And this is like, you know, the fun way of teaching it. Four D's, right? So lithium is contraindicated if somebody has dehydration because dehydration can lead to increase in the serum level of the lithium and leading to lithium toxicity. Next D stands for my friends, drug interaction. I always teach my students that do you want to give lithium to somebody who is on Lasix? Do you want to give lithium to somebody who's on thiazide medication? No, because remember I told you, lithium medication, if it's given with Lasix and thiazide, you guys know what is Lasix and thiazide going to do? It removes the water out of the body and sodium also out of the body. So when the sodium level goes down, lithium levels automatically goes up. So that's why we do not give it to the patient who is undergoing dehydration and drug interaction with medications like Lasix and Thiazide. There are a couple of more drugs which they test in your NCLEX RN exam and I want to cover that with you guys is we do not give those medications with NSAIDs, right? NSAIDs are your ibuprofen, naproxen because that also leads to the increase in the level of toxicity. And finally, there are some herbs which are tested in your NCLEX for example, St. John Watts. So St. John Watt is also contraindicated with the lithium because that can also induce lithium toxicity. And I've already explained you the symptoms. I hope you guys know. Put it in a comment section. We have the GI symptoms initially leading to the neurological conditions down the road, right? Ataxia and all that stuff. You must be thinking, you guys are smart peeps. Tell me, Taran, what is the another D? So the another D in this one, my friends, is called as decreased kidney function how do you know that the kidneys are working you guys know we check number one thing is creatinine right so as nurses you look into the creatinine level so if the creatinine level is more than 1.3 we can say patient is having some kind of kidney issue some kind of kidney function so we should be contraindicating this medication which is called as lithium i hope you guys got it right so dehydration, drug interaction, kidney function, and you guys must be thinking, what is the another last D and come on, tell us. So this is my friends, diet low in sodium. Same like, you know, Lasix is removing the sodium out of your body. But if the patient is consuming low salt, which is low sodium, that can also lead to the toxicity of the lithium in their body. So I hope this is the easy way to remember lithium toxicity, four d's right and put it in the comment section if you guys like this way to remember this drug last but not the least contraindication is my friends we do not give this drug if somebody is pregnant or breastfeeding because mothers who are pregnant this medication can lead to teratogenic effects teratogenic uh, deformities in the baby something can happen to the fetus right so we don't want to give that and this also should not be given to the mothers who are breastfeeding. This medication can be excreted out into the breast milk, right? So if they test you in NCLEX, you guys know your answers. Can we give lithium in pregnancy? 
No, we can't. Okay, good job. So sometimes you get a medication and then you get a side effect for that, right? So patients can complain of paresthesia, tingling, numbness, sensation, right? Adverse effects. So this is where students, they get confused in NCLEX. Adverse effects means more serious. Side effects means, you know, it happened like, you know, a little bit. So, but adverse means when the things, they become more and more dangerous. And so you, this is how you need to distinguish in your NCLEX when you're reading the question, read the question carefully. Are they asking you side effect or they're asking you the adverse effect, right? So this is the tip which I give to my students. Adverse effects of this one can be if the patient is experiencing metallic taste in the mouth, if your patient is experiencing severe diarrhea and weight gain, right? All those symptoms which are affecting the quality of your patient's life can tell you that patient is probably entering into the stage of adverse effects. And then you know if the patient is experiencing metallic taste, severe diarrhea, weight gain, those kind of things, then you need to contact the physician because physician has to readjust the dosage of that patient. What other nursing education do you can give to your patient? So encourage the patient to increase the sodium level. Remember I told you if the sodium levels are low, what can happen? Patient can go into lithium toxicity. So sometimes we can encourage the patient that, hey, you know what? We have to improve or take the adequate sodium intake in that case. And sometimes, you know, if the patient is like in a severely low situation, then the doctors can also recommend sodium tablets in those scenarios. And of course, I already talked about salt tablets. Watch the patient for GI symptoms. And it's very important. And that's what they test in NCLEX. You need to teach to the patient that if you get any GI symptoms, for example, if your patient is getting nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, don't wait at home. Give us a call or come see the doctor. And finally, neurological symptoms, which can also confusion, ataxia and tinnitus. Tinnitus is whenever I teach to the students, sometimes they don't know, ringing in the ears. And that also tells you that the patient is heading towards more adverse symptoms of this one. Now let's just practice an NCLEX RM style question, right? Because now you know the theory, now you know everything. So this is what, how I teach my students. Understanding theory is very important, but it's very important for you guys to also understand the application, how to apply that knowledge into question. So are you guys ready to do that challenge with me? All right, so let's just do here and we will solve this question. So I'm gonna give you guys some time and then you can put it in the comment section and then I'll give you guys the answer. So a patient on lithium therapy presents with severe diarrhea, tremors and confusion. What is the nurse's priority action? So think about it. If the patient is presenting with diarrhea tremors, now you guys have already studied, this means patient is entering toxicity and patient is experiencing some adverse symptoms here. Do you want to just give antidiarrheal medication and send the patient home? No, that option is eliminated. Are you just going to tell the patient, okay, drink more water if you have diarrhea, just go home? No, you know that, right? We can't do that. Checking the blood glucose level, why? Why? Because it's nothing given to us that patient is diabetic or anything, right? So if you eliminate, my friends, this is the correct option that you know patient is entering into toxicity. So you want to confirm with your physician, you want to hold the medication, and then you want to call with the doctor and see, hey, what should we do? Should we draw the therapeutic levels again? Do you want to assess the patient? What should I do with that? Does that make sense? Perfect. Good job. So if you guys like our video, guys, please help us out. Uh, spread the word, you know, share the information with your friends because we absolutely rely on our students, right? For the support system. Are you guys ready for another question? There you go. Which of the following medications should be avoided in the patient taking with lithium? I already taught you. Tylenol, acetaminophen, diuretics, antibiotics, antihistamines. What do you guys think? Tylenol is a safe one. We cannot give NSAIDs, but Tylenol is okay. And how about diuretics? No, they are contraindicated. You guys right away know this. And this is the question sometimes they test in NCLEX. That, you know, diuretics, they are going to let the water and sodium go out. And if the sodium goes out of the body, it is going to cause what? Lithium toxicity. Okay, so now let's just quickly talk about patient education on medications to avoid, right? So this is what we have already discussed with you. And now some Canadian nursing considerations. So if you guys are uh, working in US, Canada, Australia, pretty much like, you know, we adhere to the same guidelines. So adhering to the Canadian guidelines for lithium monitoring is a paramount in ensuring patient safety. This includes regular blood tests to track lithium levels. 
and adjusting the dosage so initially doctors can ask sometimes when you know patient is in like really bad situation usually recommended standard is two to three weeks you want to do the blood work but depending upon the doctor sometimes we can also do the blood work quicker so maybe once a week as well initially to adjust the dosage right so in canadian guidelines it's very important for us that we are ensuring the patient safety right whenever we give the drugs like this we expect collaboration and ethical approach here and working closely with the interdisciplinary team so this means you will be collaborating with physicians pharmacists and other healthcare professionals right so in canada or in western countries guys when we work together we we look into the collaborative approach those are the sometimes things which we test in your nclex rn as well so thank you so much from the entire team of fbn pc and uh, we are looking forward to see you guys in our batches and in our programs and if you enjoyed the way we teach you uh, we will make sure that you definitely get your dream title of becoming registered nurse and rpn with fpn pc please don't forget to share this information with your friends give us some thumbs up so that we get motivated and then we know that you are liking our videos thank you